Hey, good to have you back. This is John. Let me start by saying, at a later date, I'll be following up with a video on Stan Laurel. And though some of his work is mentioned in this video, but now, in this video, we tell the story, life, and visit the grave of Oliver Babe Hardy. Oliver Norville Hardy was an American comic actor and half of Laurel and Hardy, the double act that began in the era of silent films that lasted from 1926 to 1957. He appeared with his comedy partner Stan Laurel in 107 short films, feature films, and cameo roles. He was born Norvell Hardy in Harlem, Georgia, January 18, 1892. His father, Oliver Hardy Sr., assisted his father in running the remnants of the family cotton plantation. He then bought a share in a retail business. Hardy's mother, Emily Norvell, was the daughter of Thomas Benjamin Norvell, who was descendant from Hugh Norvell of Williamsburg, Virginia, and Emily's mother was Mary Freeman. Hardy Sr. and Norvell married March 12, 1890. It was her second marriage and his third. Oliver Sr. came with three girls, Oliver and his brother, Sam, by their marriage. The family moved to Madison, Georgia in 1891, the year before Norvell's birth. His father died less than a year after his birth. Hardy was the youngest of five children. His older brother Sam drowned in the Osani River. Hardy pulled him from the river but was unable to resuscitate him. As a child, Hardy was sometimes difficult. In the fifth grade, he was sent to Georgia Military College in Milledgeville. In 1905, when he was 13, he was sent to Young Harris College in North Georgia for the fall semester, which he completed successfully in January 1906. He had little interest in formal education, although he acquired an early interest in music and theater. He joined a theatrical group and later ran away from the boarding school near Atlanta to sing with the group. His mother recognized his talent for singing and sent him to Atlanta to study music and voice. He skipped some of his lessons to sing in the Alcazar Theater for $3.50 a week. In 1912, he signed up for a course or two at University of Georgia as a law major for fall semester just to play football. He never missed a game. As a teenager, Hardy began styling himself Oliver Norville Hardy, adding the first name, Oliver, as a tribute to his father. He used Oliver as his first name in all subsequent legal records. Hardy was initiated into Freemason at Solomon Lodge No. 20 in Jacksonville, Florida, which helped him with room and board when he was just starting out in show business. At around 18 years of age in 1910, the Palace, a motion picture theater, opened in Hardy's hometown of Milledgeville, and he became the projectionist, ticket taker, janitor, and manager. He soon became obsessed with the new motion picture industry and was convinced that he could do a better job than the actors that he saw. A friend suggested that he move to Jacksonville, Florida, where some films were being made which he did in 1913, so he was around 21 years of age. He worked in Jacksonville as a cabaret and vaudeville singer at night and at the Lubin Manufacturing Company during the day. It was at this time he met Madeline Solotion, a pianist whom he married on November 17, 1913, in Macon, Georgia. The next year, he made his first movie, Outwitting Dad, in 1914, for the Lubin Studios, billed as O.N. Hardy. 
In most of his silent films before joining producer Hal Roach, he was billed on screen as Babe Hardy. The nickname Babe originated from an Italian barber near Lubin Studios in Jacksonville, Florida, who would rub Hardy's face with talcum powder and say, That's nice, a baby. Other actors in the Lubin company mimicked this, and Hardy was billed as Babe Hardy. And for the first time, billed as Babe in the film Back to the Farm in 1914. He was a big man standing 6 foot 1 or 1.85 meters and weighing up to 300 pounds or 136 kilograms and his size placed limits on the roles that he could play. He was most often cast as the villain, but he also had roles in comedy shorts. By 1915, Hardy had made 50 short one-reel films at Lubin. Not bad for 23 years of age. He moved to New York and made films for Pathé Casino and Edison Studios. He then returned to Jacksonville, where he made films for the Vim Comedy Company. That studio closed after Hardy discovered that the owners were stealing from the payroll. He then worked for the King B Studio, which bought Vin, and worked with Billy Rue, Billy West, a Charles Chaplin imitator. He continued playing the villains for West well into the early 1920s. Between 1916 through 1917, Hardy experienced a brief directorial career. He is credited for directing or co-directing 10 shorts, all played by him. In 1917, Hardy moved to Los Angeles, working freelance for several Hollywood studios. He made more than 40 films for Vitagraph between 1918 and 1923, mostly playing the heavy for Larry Selmon. Then in 1919, he separated from his wife Madeline, ending with a provisional divorce in November 1920 that was finalized on November 17, 1921. Then seven days later, November 24th, 1921, he married actress Myrtle Reeves. This marriage was also unhappy and Reeves was said to have become an alcoholic. If you wanted to measure where fate began, it begins here when Oliver worked with Stan Laurel in The Lucky Dog in 1921. Six years before they became a team, he appeared in the movie produced by Broncho Billy Anderson and starring Stan Laurel. Hardy played the part of a robber trying to hold up Stan's character. They did not work together again for several years. In 1924, now roughly 32 years of age, Hardy began working at the Hal Roach Studios with the Our Gang Films and Charlie Chase. In 1925, he starred as the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. Also that year, he was in the film Yes, Yes, Nanette, starring Jimmy Finlayson and directed by Stan Laurel. In later years, Finlayson frequently was a supporting actor in the Laurel and Hardy film series. His last film with Laurel and Hardy was Saps at Sea, but his last film was Here Comes the Groom for Paramount in 1951. He died at the age of 66. Hardy would play two other shorts directed by Laurel, Wandering Papas and a Madam Mystery, both in 1926. Also in 1926, Hardy was to appear in Get Em Young, but he was unexpectedly hospitalized after being burned by a hot leg of lamb, which on a weekend he severely burned his arm while cooking a roast leg of lamb. So Roach suggested Laurel take Hardy's place. Laurel had been working as a gag man and a director at Roach Studios, so he was recruited to fill in. In 1927, 
Laurel and Hardy began sharing screen time together in Slipping Wives. And with Love in Hisses, Roach Studios supervising director Leo McCary recognized the audience reaction to the two and began teaming them together, which led to the start of a Laurel and Hardy series later that year. At a later date, I'll be following up with a video on Stan Laurel, so allow me to keep closer to Oliver Hardy in this one. In 1937, Hardy and Myrtle Reeves divorced. He made Zenobia with Larry Langdon in 1939 while waiting for a contractual issue to be resolved between Laurel and Hal Roach. New contracts were agreed upon and the team was lent out to producer Boris Morse at General Services Studios to make the Flying Deuces in 1939. While on the lot, Hardy fell in love with Virginia Lucille Jones, a script girl whom he married the next year. They enjoyed a happy marriage for the rest of his life. In 1949, Hardy's friend John Wayne asked him to play a supporting role in the Fighting Kentuckian. Hardy had previously worked with Wayne in a charity production of the play What Price Glory, while Laurel began treatment for his diabetes a few years previously. Oliver was initially hesitant, but he accepted the role at Laurel's insistence. Frank Capra invited him to play a cameo role in Riding High with Bing Crosby in 1950. During 1950 through 1951, Laurel and Hardy made their final film, Atoll K, also known as Utopia, and both suffered serious physical illnesses during the filming. They also appeared in This Is Music Hall in 1955, their final appearance together. The pair contracted with Hal Roach Jr. to produce a series of TV shows based on the Mother Goose fables in 1955. The series was postponed when Laurel suffered a stroke and required a lengthy convalescence. Later that year, while Laurel was recovering, Hardy suffered a mild heart attack in May 1954 and he began looking after his health for the first time in his life. He lost more than 150 pounds or 68 kilograms in a few months which completely changed his appearance. Both men were smokers. Hal Roach said that they were a couple of freight train smokestacks. Hardy suffered a major stroke on September 14, 1956 that left him confined to bed and unable to speak for several months. He remained at home in the care of his wife, Lucille. After suffering two more strokes in early August 1957, he slipped into a coma and died from cerebral thrombosis on August 7, 1957, at age 65. Laurel was inconsolable at the loss of his dear pal and partner. His doctor advised Laurel against attending the funeral due to his own poor health. Laurel continued to write sketches for the two that would never be. Lucille was at Oliver's side when he died August 7, 1957. She remarried to businessman Ben Price. Lucille and Ben were married November 11, 1960, roughly 27 months later. Ben died February 24, 1986. Lucille wanted to have Ben buried in the same location as Oliver, but that section had long since been filled. But somehow, that week, Valhalla called her and said there was an opening. Just eight months apart from Ben, Lucille died October 8, 1986. She like Oliver, and like Ben, all died at age 77. Coming soon, 
one on Stan Laurel and others from the Hal Roach gang, as well as more Lucille Ball and many of your favorite entertainers and their shows, as copyright allows, that is. By the way, my videos take time because of the research involved with cross-referencing to be sure information is as factual as can be found. Thank you for watching, subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.